the point in not putting him in my list, but the body of work. I mean, this guy has been playing consistent footy since the 2011 Premiership, that Geelong one, and he's still doing it. He is aging like fine wine. He's one of those players that every season you write him off because of age, and they get better. They don't just maintain. This guy is getting better, which is fucking scary. I wouldn't blame you if you put him even higher, but I just think there are more important positions on the pitch. You know, as a sort of midfielder winger, he's important, obviously. No, I'm not saying he's not, but maybe just the position lets him down. In seventh place, I've gone with a player who I wouldn't say is anywhere near the qualities of Mitch Duncan, but his position is very, very important to this debate. I've gone with Daniel Talia. Now, Daniel Talia originally went at pick 13 to the Adelaide Crows. If he had have gone at pick number seven, he would have gone to West Coast. West Coast will be crying about that. Now, they did choose Brad Shepard, who I will get into in a little bit, but I mean, Daniel Talia, what a defender. I think he's two-time All-Australian winner. Well, not winner, but, you know, he made the All-Australian team twice. Key defender, obviously, Key defender, intercept defender, key forward, the most important players on the pitch. And to be honest, he just was a top three defender, key defender throughout his peak years. Probably around 2015 to 2019 or so, maybe even earlier than 2015. He did drop off and he's obviously retired, has been for a while, but I rated him. Yeah, and to me, he deserves a pick number eight. Sorry, I picked number seven, not pick number eight. At pick number six, I've gone with a bull, an absolute bull. He overcame a cancer, which is also fucking testament to his character. I've gone with Mr. Ben Cunnington. Ben Cunnington went at pick number five to the North Melbourne Football Club. Not much difference there. I've just put him at pick number six. He would have gone to the Sydney Football Club. So Sydney won't be crying too much. They did pick Gary Rowan, who doesn't make my list. But I mean, that guy is just such a phenomenal player. I, there's not too much more I can say about him, to be completely honest. But he's done now. You know, he's, I'm not even, is he retired or? I'm not sure, but he was a contested beast. I mean, he was breaking records with his contested possession footy. He is just scary good. Unfortunately, the injuries and the health scares uh, did sort of mean his career towards the latter end was tarnished. Well, not tarnished, but you know, obviously because of the therapy, chemotherapy would have gone to his body, wouldn't enable him to get back to the capabilities that it once was, which is really sad. And he didn't win anything at North Melbourne, but he, I believe, was a captain for periods. Uh, and he is just such a good player. I, everyone wants him in their team. A true farmer, classic Aussie rules player. He's, there's nothing pretty about his appearance or, you know, he doesn't have that rig, but he's just a fucking hard guy and every team wants that. I picked number five, I've gone with Dylan Grimes from the Richmond Football Club. People will be saying it's biased because I go for Richmond, but I'm going with Dill, big grimmer. So he went to pick number two in the preseason draft, uh, just after the normal draft. Now, if he did go pick number five, he would have gone at North Melbourne. North Melbourne would love that. I mean, this guy, I talk about 